Aspect. 
Sucks. 
Norwich and Wicca are therefore linked. Entomologically, they used to emphasize different things today. Very interesting. I would still like to learn if um, there are actually links besides the entomological link to the past with ancient belief or if this is solely a new age religion. same people that believe the deities to be 
subsequently changed. Interesting. So I wonder why the name should be secret. That's interesting. Although different Wiccans attribute different traits to the Horned God, he is most often associated with animals and the natural world, but also with an afterlife. And he is furthermore often viewed as an ideal role model for men. I wonder what about him is, um, should be set as a role model. It doesn't really talk more about his character or what he is like, so maybe that's a time for another reading. The Mother Goddess has been associated with life, fertility, and the springtime, and has been described as an ideal role model for women. Interesting. Wicca's duotheism has been compared to the Taoist system of yin and yang. Other Wiccans have adopted the original Gardenarian god slash goddess duotheistic structure, but have adopted deity forms other than that of the horned god and the mother goddess. For instance, the god has been interpreted as the oak king and the holy king, as well as the sun god, sun slash lover of god, and the vegetation god. He has also been seen in the roles of the leader of the wild hunt, and the Lord of Death. The Goddess is often portrayed as a triple goddess, thereby being a triadic deity, comprising a maiden goddess, a mother goddess, and a crone goddess, each of whom has different associations, namely virginity, fertility, and wisdom. Other Wiccan conceptualizations have portrayed her as a moon goddess and as a menstruating goddess. According to the anthropologist Susan Greenwood, in Wicca, the goddess is a symbol of self-transformation. She is seen to be constantly changing and a force for change for those who open themselves up to her. I wonder what it means by open themselves up to her. If that ensues your belief, or if there is an other element of practice that they adopt. Now we move to monotheism and polytheism. Gardner states that beyond Wicca's two deities was the supreme deity or prime mover, an entity that was too complex for humans to understand. This belief has been endorsed by other prominent practitioners who have referred to it as the Cosmic Logos, another good reference to ancient Stoicism, the Logos. Supreme Cosmic Power or Godhead. God envisioned this supreme deity as a deist entity who had created the undergods among them the god and goddess, but who was not otherwise involved in the world. Alternately, other Wiccans have interpreted such an entity as a pantheistic being, of whom the god and goddess are facets. Although Gardner criticized monotheism, citing the problem of evil, explicitly monotheistic forms of Wicca developed in the 1960s, when the US-based Church of Wicca developed a theology rooted in the worship of what they described as one deity without a gender. In the 1970s, Dianic Wiccan groups developed, which were devoted to a singular monotheistic goddess. This approach was often criticized by members of British traditional Wiccan groups who lamblasted such goddess monotheism as an inverted imitation of Christian theology. As in other forms of Wicca, some goddess monotheists have expressed the view that the goddess is not an entity with a literal existence, but rather a Jungian archetype. As well as pantheism and duotheism, many Wiccan 
rights do justice or um so this is the end of part one i'll go and record the other parts so just know that if the other parts aren't online yet they will be soon i hope you really enjoyed this um it's super fun for me to read about wicca it's a really random and interesting uh religion and worldview and i'll see you in the next part